بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa children. The first child to be born for Adam alayhi salam was a boy by the name of Qabil. In, in English or in biblical terms, his name is Cain. He was born first. And straight after him in the same stomach was a sister. So they were twins. Born twins. And it is said by our scholars that the last of his children was Sheath. In biblical terms, his name is Seth. And some say he was also a prophet. He was given scriptures. We'll talk about him a little bit later, inshallah. So the first one was Qabil, Cain and his twin sister. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful. Whereas Qabil wasn't very, was not very handsome. After him came Habil. In biblical terms, his name is Abel. And he also had a twin sister. But Habil was a little bit more handsome. And his twin sister wasn't as attractive. It was only in those times where... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed brothers and sisters to marry from each other. Incest was allowed at that time, but not their twin. And it's narrated in many hadiths that, different narrations of hadith, that, that Hawa carried many stomachs, more than 100 stomachs, 200 stomachs, and each one of them was a twin. So she always carried twins, a boy and a girl, every time. A boy and a girl, every time. So Qabil and Habil were the first two and they had twin sisters. You weren't allowed to marry your twin sister. So they'd marry from other sisters, well, from the twin sisters of others. Otherwise, we would not have been here. It would, they would have died out and nothing, we couldn't have come here at all. The one who allowed the marriage, the marriage between us and forbid the marriage of the brother and sister, uncle and auntie, children and grandchildren and so on, and parents, is Allah. And the one who allowed the marriage at that time between non-twin brothers and sisters is Allah. The same one who created us, the same one who made this okay and healthy for us, is the one that allowed it at that time. Obviously their, their biology, biological features inside were the same as us, but a little bit more advanced. You know, Allahu Alam, a little bit different to what archaeological findings suggest today, that hundreds of thousands of years ago or millions of years ago, human beings were very, uh, you know, premature. This is not true. And we have a lot of scientific evidences to disprove this, such as the fossils they have found. The oldest the oldest fossil they have found is called the Cambrian. And this Cambrian fossil, they also call it the Cambrian era, was more than 500 million years ago, as memory serves me. And this fossil is a complete nervous system, complete everything. It wasn't premature at all. It wasn't primitive. And as I mentioned last week, you watch some documentaries of archaeological findings and they date back 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 years ago, finding bones of humans and, and, and other artifacts, and they were quite advanced. I, I said to my wife the other day, subhanAllah, I feel that I think the early generations were more advanced than us technologi technologically. Why? I said because we couldn't have reached what we reached without knowing, for example, what the wheel is, the circle. They invented it. A long time ago, what the wheel is. We mentioned last week that they, about 50,000 years ago, they found the first flute. So that's, that's quite a design, to design a flute. Anyway, we all understand what Allah has told us in the Quran, no matter what they say. So they intermarried from one another. 
Well, they did not intermarry. They were meant to marry from one another. Adam alayhi salam decreed that Habil would marry the sister of Qabil and Qabil would marry the, the twin sister of Habil. Qabil had a sickness in his nafs. That was his test. His test was jealousy. Being the older brother, being the one who wanted the, the nicer sister, he wanted his own twin sister because she was prettier. Habil didn't mind. But this was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't marry his own twin sister. This is haram. So Qabil got very jealous. Now remember what we said before. The first sin was arrogance by Iblis. What led to it was jealousy. Now Qabil is experiencing the same thing. And Iblis is right there. He's thinking to himself, probably, how easy the first test is going to be. How easy the first trickery is going to be for me. I've just lived it before. I know exactly what to do. Unless he is sincere. Unless Qabil turns to Allah and becomes sincere to him, I will not have power over him. Keep in mind, no sin had ever been committed, my brothers and sisters. No, they had never seen anyone before them commit such a sin. Qabil hadn't learned this from anyone. It was naturally inside of us. It's naturally inside of us. Look at it, test it out. Look at a two-year, if you've got any children, two-year-olds, one-year-old, maybe not one, maybe one and a half, two years old, right? And watch them when another baby takes their dummy, for example, or their bottle. They fight for it. They want it back. We always have the, uh, you know, that saying. It's like taking uh, candy from a baby. Yeah, the baby always loves his candy, right? And they will fight. Babies will fight, fight babies to get their candy back. Isn't that right? There's, there's selfishness there. And we've got to try and teach them not to be like that. So Qabil had that jealousy. Habil tried to advise him. And Habil was stronger actually. It was said that he is stronger physically. He tried to advise him. My brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this is his decree. And he said to him, take my... I'll you know, let me take my sister and you take your own. He said, no, 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 I'll take your sister, you take mine. Now Adam alayhi salam knew about this. So he brought them together and he said to them, okay, why don't you go? He knew what the outcome was going to be. But he wanted to show Qabil a lesson. So he can forget about this. He said to him, why don't you both go and offer an offering? An offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. In those days, if you donated something or made an offering for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they would see like, like something like fire come down and it will take the offering. It's a sign of acceptance, that I have accepted your piety. It's not like offering to a statue or something like that. Allah does not need. Allah says, already answers this in the Quran. When you slaughter your sheep in Hajj, for example, that sacrifice, Allah says, it is not its meat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives. Allah doesn't need any of that. He already explained that. Nor is it its blood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. But what he does receive from you is your piety. Giving that offering is the piety. How does he let them know in those days? By showing them that he has been accepted. Your piety is better. So, Allah mentions this in the Quran. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعْضُ بِلَمْشِ تَرَجُمْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَاتْنُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ بْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَ قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ فَتُقَبَّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكَ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ which means and recite upon them and recite upon them the story the true story of the two sons of Adam when they offered a sacrifice and it was accepted from one of them and not accepted from the other. The latter said, this, the other person who, whose offering was not accepted said, I will kill you to his brother. 
The former, the first one whose offering was accepted, replied, Allah accepts only from those who are pious. Meaning, my brother, if you are pious, Allah will accept it from you. It seems that I have given it impiety. So shape up, my brother. He's given him an advice. But the truth hurt his brother. It only made the jealousy grow. He said, what, so now you're going to take my sister? Is this what it's all about? In the Sahih Hadith, it says that Habil went, he was a shepherd. He had sheep. And Qabil was a farmer. He grew wheat and, and crops. Habil went and, found, and got his finest, fattest, best sheep. And he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his, his worst bits of wheat that he had. And so Allah accepted the fine one and rejected the ugly one. The piety is what he was after. And obviously here was a feeling of selfishness and greed. So because of that he said, I'm going to kill you. Allahu Akbar. Now Iblis couldn't kill Adam alayhi salam. So what did he do? He did worse. Now Qabil, this is the human nature. Different to Iblis's nature. It's what Iblis wants. The worst thing a human, the worst thing a Muslim can do to another Muslim or to any other human who is, they are at peace with, is to kill them. So he said, That's the best way he's going to get his revenge. Allahu Akbar. Get rid of him. Jealous of him? They're better than you? Get rid of him, man. Get him off here. I can't look at them anymore. Get rid of him. Why? For myself. My selfish greed, just for me. Allah had forbidden this. He said, This earth is for all. And my dear and my true believers are the ones who inherit it. So, what happened? Qabil began to develop this. And Habil kept on advising him, My brother, be a pious person, Allah will accept it from you. It is not because of the sister or whatever, it's because of yourself. Be pious to Allah and all will be resolved. But you're not letting yourself go. You're not submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah continues by saying that he said to them and recite to them. This verse came down at the time to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he explains to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he had informed Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Musa, to tell the children of Israel, the Jews today, the children of Israel, the following story of Qabil and Habil. Why? Because the children of Israel, Allah knew that they were beginning to shed blood. And he knew about them in the future, that they will also shed blood and oppress. And we know of the children of Israel who are the Jews today, what they are doing to the innocent, weak and feeble Muslims in Palestine. All they need to do is watch any documentary written by non-Muslims, any documentary by a non-Muslim, and you will see what we are talking about, the two different, uh, the, 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 the upper class and lower class of people. The upper class, obviously, are the Jewish people living up in high mountains, well-guarded, beautiful mansions, and the rest, the Palestinians, and included with them are the Christians, but especially the Muslims, living, wallahi, may Allah be with them, worse than the homes of rats. They are killed, murdered. There is no uh, remorse even for the children and the babies. No one cares about them. But Allah says, do not assume that the zalim, the oppressor, that Allah is unaware of what they are doing. He is merely just giving them a weight. So the punishment can be worse. Let them earn more sins. When they kill them, they'll come to go to paradise. But them, I'm just waiting for them. They're all going to die anyway in the end. But these ones, they're going to get it really bad. The oppressors. Our Rasul Sallallahu or our scholars are unanimous on this. That there is no sin that a person does... There is no sin that you do on earth except that either if you repent Allah will forgive it 
or its punishment will be in the hereafter. Except for two sins. Their punishment is both in this world and in the hereafter. And I'd like to add, there are some sins which its punishment are only in the world instead of the hereafter. But there are no other sins that where you get both punishments in this world and in the hereafter. Both, except for two sins. And they are killing, murder, and corruption. Corrupting people's lives. Oppression. So corruption is oppression and murder. The person of this will be punished in this world and in the hereafter. Their life will be miserable. They will cop it and they will die a terrible death. And in the hereafter, their punishment is multiplied. So people who separate between families, for example, who cut off relationships, who help in spreading rumors about husband and wife until they cause them to divorce, those who cut off their family ties with their relatives and their cousins for worldly reasons. The husband cuts off his wife from her family and the wife brings bickering and nagging to her husband about his family night and day in order to cause the cutting off between him and his brothers and sisters and his parents. Did you know, my brothers and sisters, our scholars are unanimous about this? That the punishment for this is in this world and in the hereafter? Both. So a person may ask themselves, why, don't I, why am I poor? For example, why do I work and I never get anything? Why am I always misery and doors are closed in my way? Why is it and why is it I live miserably? Why is it I'm so rich and I'm still miserable? Why are my children doing this to me? Why is that? Why? Monitor, what, what kind of deeds and actions have we done? Has someone we've oppressed made a dua against us maybe? So we should always seek forgiveness from people, my dear brothers and sisters. We should always monitor our actions towards people. Corruption and murder. Qati'atu rahim. Separating and severing the ties of relationships. Allah says reverence to him and reverence to the wombs that bore you. The womb. What is the womb? Allah called relationships and cousins and relatives. and They called it the ones who share the womb. The ones who share the womb. In the hadith Sahih, Allah said in the hadith Al Qudsi, to the Rahim, to the womb. Man Whoever cuts you off, severs you, I will sever him from me. Woman wasalaki wasalto. And whoever connects you, then I will connect them to me. Especially between the husbands and the wives. This happens a lot, brothers and sisters. My past dealings in the past of news and information that I receive about couples. Among the first things they attack is the spouse's family. His mum, her mother, his father, her father, brothers and sisters. Okay, we get wronged a little bit by some people, I know that. We wrong others and we get wronged. No one is perfect. But there is the good and there is the bad. There is the righteous and there is non-righteous. There is the harsh and there is the soft. There is the good doers and the bad doers. There is those who want the akhirah and there are those who want this dunya. Allah says this in the Quran. مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ There are among you those who just want this world and there are those among you who desire the hereafter. Which one do you want to be? A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, I have relatives. Every time I do good to them, they do bad to me. Every time I do good to them, they do bad to me. They wronged me. I try to get close, they push me away. Rasulullah said, Really? Is this really the case? He said, Yes. He said, So long as you are doing good to them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing them with your goodness. If they don't like you doing good, they don't like that because, because you're so good, that's why they're doing that. And every time you do more good, they're getting hurt. They want you to be bad. Don't continue to be good, and you'll win this world and the hereafter. And then the husband and wife divorce. What is that husband and wife going to do? How is that husband going to differentiate? How is the husband going to 
bring his wife closer and push away his own mum, mum and dad, his own brothers and sisters. How is that wife going to do that too? How, how would she do that? How? How do, you, how do you fix this problem? They're both extremely important. In fact, the wife or the husband can be divorced, but you can't divorce yourself from brothers and sisters, mother and father. They're there for life, forever. And so we should consile together and never mention anything about our brothers and sisters, our relatives. This is revenge, this is hurt, this is, this is obscene, this is really bad. And then you live a life of misery after that. And your children, they suffer too. Because then they can't talk to their auntie and uncle. They can't speak to their cousins and relatives. Wallah, this is a major sin. You find this in several ayat in the Quran. وَأُلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ And those of the womb. Those of the womb. Qabil wanted to kill his brother. What did his brother Habil say in reply? he said, Yet, O oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. For I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Instead, I would prefer that you bear the burden of my sin and your sin together, and so become an inhabitant of the fire. That is the recompense of the transgressors. Brother, if this is what you want to do, I'm not going to do the same thing. You can take my sins and your sins. What does this mean? It's not automatic, but it means on the day of judgment, those whom we have oppressed, they will take our sin, we will take their sins, and they will take our good deeds. Which one do you want to be? Now, especially in relation to Muslims and relatives. A brother or a sister of yours, or, well, yeah, brother, sister, relatives, if they want to harm you physically, avoid their harm, but don't do the same to them. A Muslim wants to harm you, avoid their harm, but don't do the same to them. They can carry your sin if they like. Allah says, فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبَحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْءَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ Which means, his soul then prompted him to kill his brother. And he killed him and became one of the losers. Then Allah sent a raven scratching into the earth to show him how to bury the corpse of his brother. He said, Woe to me. Was I not even able to do as this raven and so bury my brother? Then he became full of remorse. He regretted. He regretted, but he did not repent. He regretted, but he did not repent. And this is the way he died. Regret is not enough, my dear brothers and sisters. There are people who regret their actions, but they don't do anything about it. And there are those who regret and they repent. They fix those are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we have written upon the children of Israel that whoever kills one soul, it is as if they have killed all of mankind. They killed one soul unjustly. And whoever revives one soul, it is as if they have revived all of mankind. Islam is about keeping life, preserving it, not killing it. And also, 
in the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that because of this, Qabil will carry the sin of every murderer until the last hour. Including the murderer himself, he will carry that sin. So the murderer will carry it, and Qabil will get a share of that sin. This is because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Anyone who does a good thing starts it, peep, and everyone who does it, they will also get the reward of a share of it. And whoever starts a bad thing and people do it, then they will get a share of that bad thing until they repent. So monitor your actions, my dear brothers and sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make our affairs righteous, to reconcile between us and our relatives and loved ones, to keep our relationships strong, full of iman, to unite between husband and wife, to unite between them on iman and righteousness, to save us from bickering and nagging, and save us from complaints except to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh Allah, forgive us and our tongues, for it is the tongues that make us enter hellfire. It is the tongues which, har which harvest and make us enter hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to protect us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خير والحمد لله رب العالمين إياكم